Gardner Public Schools is a student-centered district. We listen to our students and at the high school that plays out through advisories, annual student voice surveys, as well as a guidance curriculum that lasts all the way from 8th grade through 12th grade. Those are ways that we collect information, but Portrait of a Graduate truly helped supplement and support a lot of the information that we have. Portrait of a Graduate gathered so much information and we use that information to make decisions every day. Whether it's financial resources or personnel, utilizing them the best to again support the students in what they say they need for their future. In addition to that, programs like financial literacy and equity programs all came about through the Portrait of a Graduate program. Very excited about our work with Portrait of a Graduate as well. We're doing this in conjunction with the folks at Mount Wachusett Community College and area high schools, Lemonster, Fitchburg, and Winchenden. What we've discovered is a lot of this work has actually reinforced a lot of what we're already doing with our early college and innovation pathways. Um, we really already have a leg up on a lot of this work as far as preparing our students for life after high school. And really what we wanted to learn from this work was what are we doing to prepare our students? And we've discovered we're doing a lot of things really well. We've also discovered that there are a few things that we could work on. Two areas that have come up repeatedly for all the area schools are financial literacy and general, I'm gonna say life skills. What we've done with the financial literacy to address that need is we actually have a graduation requirement here now at Gardner High School where students need to take a semester course in financial literacy where they learn the basics about loans and budgets and insurance and how these things work, which has been a real need and that was expressed over and over again in our alumni surveys. So we feel really good about that. The other piece is general, I'm gonna call them life skills, how to take care of yourself when you graduate. How do I cook? How do I sew? How do I create a budget? So starting next year, we have a new life management class that's gonna be available to our sophomores, juniors, and seniors, where they will take a semester course learning these basic skills so that they can live confidently, independently when they graduate. And we think these two classes in conjunction with each other are really going to address this need and give our, our graduates a real foundation for preparation for when they graduate. I am very excited about our Innovation Pathways program here at Gardner High School. We have four designated pathways. We have business and finance, healthcare, information technology, and manufacturing. So how those pathways work are students start in 8th, 9th, and into 10th grade doing exploratory classes here at the high school in their chosen area of interest. They get to sample some different classes. And then as they get up into 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, they have some options. And if they want to stay in one of those pathways, they're able to do it a couple of different ways. They can stay here at the high school where they have access to at least two college level courses and at least two courses that will give them some sort of a credential in their chosen path. Or if they want to expand upon that a little bit more, they're able to transition into our early college program at which time they go to the college and they're able to take additional courses in their chosen path. So this really gives students multiple options in multiple pathways depending on their comfort level and how much they want to pursue. But regardless, if they're in a pathway, they graduate from Gardner High School with at least two college level courses. If they go to the college, it could be between a year and two years worth of college level courses and industry recognized credentials regardless of their chosen field. So they've got a resume built, some college classes, and hands-on experience that they have when they graduate. So we're very excited about these options for our students. In the manufacturing pathway at Gardner High School, we have eighth grade STEM. From there, freshmen and sophomores can take tech engineering, robotics one, or woodworking one. From 11th to 12th, we have MACWIC, which also has OSHA 10 certification, advanced robotics, uh, advanced woodworking, and makerspace. In all our classes, we're utilizing the engineering design process to solve tasks and problems. We solve problems teaching energy and power systems, manufacturing technologies, and tools and equipment. Students are very excited to come in here. They see the machines, they get their hands on, 
uh, their tools and they, they get to build something that they get to take home and they get to see real world applications. The skills they learn here, they use on their industry jobs. So it's a very, very real world thing for them to, to experience. So in the manufacturing pathway, we have a MacWick class that offers three uh, certifications. Level one certification is entry level information that you would find on uh, the manufacturing floor. So they'd have basic shop math, metrology using uh, measurement instruments, and blueprint reading. Um, they also have a component of safety. So the safety would be OSHA 10. OSHA 10 is a certification course that is in general industry manufacturing. That is the biggest emphasis is OSHA. Um, and then we have the second level of MacWIC where students are able to run CNC machines, be able to program them, and do quality control. So when students graduate, they can take the OSHA 10 card and use it anywhere they go, at any employee. So if they are taking a part-time job, they can use the OSHA card, you know, working at a local Dunkin' Donuts. But also they can use that card in a manufacturing job. That is like, gives you a leg up on your uh, resume. If a student is graduating from uh, Gardner High, they'll have the OSHA 10 card, they'll have a certification in SOLIDWORKS, and the level one and two in manufacturing. And that definitely looks better on the resume in addition to everything else that they take here. Our capstone and internship experiences are awesome opportunities for our students uh, to take the knowledge and skills learned in the classroom and put it to the test uh, in different experiences. So for our capstone, it is taking all of the things learned in the years in the program, finding a problem in their field of study, whether that's related to business, manufacturing, et cetera, finding information, analyzing the information, and developing a project around their solution. For the internship experience, we work with our community partners, whether that's Haywood Hospital, Greylock, or even the school district, to give our students different real-world experiences for their skills and knowledge learned in the classroom. It is a great opportunity for our students to see roles and responsibilities in a completely different light, uh, and whether they even like the role that they were researching in the first place. No matter if it's the capstone or internship, it is a great opportunity for our students to be challenged, to build relationships with our community, have an appreciation for what they're doing, taking on some more responsibility as they do it, and striving for excellence overall in everything they do. So we're acting like we're going on Shark Tank. We're gonna be one of the people going on the Shark Tank and selling our product to the sharks. I picked the lotion, so the lotion, you put it on before your workout, and then the acne should not come up because most people's sweats cause the acne. I'm picking New York to target the area for because they have the most acne problems. So the population is very high, so my increase in uh, and profits will increase. And for employees, I'm gonna ask certain questions, what qualities they need, what they need to make the things, and I will supply that all for them. And for the shark tanks, I'm gonna tell them I have 200,000 in investments, and I need 10% of the equity for them, and then they're gonna tell me if they agree or not, and why they disagree, and what I should fix about my project. One of my new positions this year is the equity leader um, and especially like focusing on family and community engagement. So we've been doing a lot of things around the school um, as far as providing food. We've been working on um, a system with distributing food to students throughout the week through Gardner CAC. Some of the other things are more technology based. So making sure students generally just have what they need, um, ensuring students have a buddy if they're out um, or need a little bit of assistance. We are currently working on um, forming an equity club that we've been meeting uh, over the past couple months and it's a lot of it's student-based and student-driven. The students found that one of our um, areas of weakness, something that we could work on, is that um, communication could go out to families in um, multiple languages. So one of our big focuses is multilingual communication. And through this discovery, we've been able to push a weekly newsletter in English, Spanish, and Portuguese every week to parents to really help um, solidify that communication. The Teaching Toolbox um, was actually inspired by the middle school. The middle school started doing this and one of our teachers, Maureen Horn, said, this is awesome, we need to start doing this. So at the beginning of the school year, um, 
I created a Google Classroom for any of the staff that want access to the teaching toolboxes and putting all of the emails that get sent out, all of the extra resources, all kinds of schedules, you know, parent communication logs, things like that to help kind of put it in one communal space so that people don't have to keep sorting through their emails or, you know, looking through a million bookmarks and it's all just kind of streamlined. I like streamlining things and it's been really helpful. Over the summer, we actually had a bunch of students come in and earn community service hours building our, our media literacy center, um, moving out outdated technology. So we had computers that have been here for who knows how long, and we transformed that to peer tutoring. Um, we have more of like a lounge area now. We have our community like food pantry. We had kids painting, painting everything, the poles, the walls, everything, um, hanging new flags, all of that stuff. So a lot of this year has been establishing it and I could see future years going forward um, really refining it and finding better systems so that you know everyone in the school has access to it. I don't, I don't know if everyone knows the full potential of it, but I'd like to spend more time, more money, more resources, more focus on really refining it and, and building it out and making it as efficient and effective as possible. Peer tutoring was one of like my first visions to help our students and I think some of our students are um, a little afraid or embarrassed to ask a teacher for help and they see that they have peers that they can come to that might be sitting in class with them or might be on their sports team or you know maybe they've never even met before but um, they have somebody that is less intimidating and they can ask oh you took this class how do I do this French one assignment and they kind of know that it's open so it was really cool because it's it's very much student driven. Um, the students apply for it, the students have to be selected, they track their own hours, they're meant uh, 2Ds, I guess would be the word. Um, they can provide evaluations, so we kind of have like a system of like checks and balances in a way where the kids can say like this tutor was great and we can kind of provide that positive feedback or we can coach the tutors a little bit. But that has evolved throughout the year, especially with COVID. One thing that we found after coming back from uh, Thanksgiving break was that greater numbers of students were being absent and, you know, for illness or otherwise. And one of the big things we had to address was those absences and you know, getting them the work they needed and the help that they needed because we have not been doing the same hybrid model and the remote model. So we had to adapt and adjust and the peer tutors were able to kind of pick that up right away, which was really nice. Um, they created their own Zoom links. They've been working with students from home on Zoom, which has been, I think, a great experience for them and really beneficial to the kids that have been absent as well. We were working on um, a bunch of different after school activities that we've seen with varying success and I think that this is something that we could definitely improve upon um, throughout the rest of the school year as well as going forward in future school years. We've been having homework club where tutors, we have tutors that work in the building, stay after school and I also help students with various subjects earlier in the year doing movies and we'd have discussions about different themes. I think that getting the weekly newsletter out has helped a bit. Um, some parents have been sending more kids after school a, a little bit. It hasn't been a booming success, but I think that even just the few kids that we've had has been really beneficial to them, earning community service hours, getting a little extra help after school. MTSS stands for Multi-Tiered Systems of Support, and we use that district-wide and in our counseling program to make sure that no students fall through the cracks. Essentially, we try to make sure that all students get everything at the Tier 1 level, and then we look for students who need more, and then move them to Tier 2, and then Tier 3 as needed. We have spent a lot of time and money improving the mental health teams within the district and within the building. Specifically, we have introduced um, extra programming in the form of our telebehavioral health program, and we have a bridge program at our school that really helps with students who are out of school for any length of time, being able to transition them back into the program. And we also have a person who works as a school-based care coordinator who works with Haywood Hospital and our schools to help get our students anything that they, that they need with regard to um, counseling or any services that the family needs in addition to that. 
So the Bridge program is a tier three uh, mental health response uh, program that we modeled off of the Bright program out of Brighton, Massachusetts. It is individualized response for students dealing with medical issues or mental health issues where they've missed extended periods of time outside of the building. Uh, reintegrating them into the classroom, making up work that has been missed in an effective way that doesn't put more strain on their mental health as they reintegrate to their full seven period schedule. So tier three means that it's, it's available to any student in the building that needs it when they meet the criteria. So tier three would be uh, specifically when your tier one, which is just school, it's your basic schedule, isn't going to work out. So taking someone that's been missed a month from hospitalization and saying, here's your seven period schedule again, we would anticipate that they would not succeed with that. So tier three means we're pulling back that schedule and constricting their schedule to a place where they can handle for a short period of time so that they can reintegrate to tier one whole school model faster. The role of the clinical outreach social worker um, is to help support the students and families that may need added support at any period in, in their attendance in Gardner High School. It's to help with mental health um, struggles, financial struggles, anything that might be a barrier to the student or the family in interfering in their education. It's my job to support the students with referrals as well as the families with community supports that might be helpful in addressing whatever challenges that they might be facing. Some of the services that I'm um, providing or helping to support with are um, outpatient therapy that takes place in school, so school-based therapy. So I help set up referrals for students to be seen during school. Um, I also work to collaborate and coordinate with other community supports, other mental health supports, and make sure that the, you know, the students' and families' needs are met across the board. So I do a lot of communicating with other local agencies and other resources to help make sure that they have what they need. Telebehavioral Health, um, our program is through Haywood. So we're here at the school. Uh, we offer four services. Our teletherapy program, which is a school-based program, and it's through Zoom, so the students are able to come from class, leave after their session, go back to class, continue their day. Even though this is a school-based program, they're able to Zoom with our clinician through um, on vacations and uh, summer breaks. We also offer our ACRO program, which is a 13-week therapy model for substance use and co-occurring mental illness. This helps students get positive coping skills, develop better communication skills to help decrease unhealthy coping skills such as substance use, self-harm, and other injurious behaviors. Our third program is our AMP Mentoring Program, which is in school with our mentor, and they meet four to six times, and our mentor is available any time of the day, even if there isn't a session planned. This uh, program also helps with academics, well-being, social interactions, stress. Our fourth um, service is Community Resources uh, that can help with housing, utility, clothing, our program is here to support the community and what they need. We offer our services right now at the high school and the academy, and we are here to support them and get to their level they need to meet during school because they don't have transportation. We're here, to, we're here to help them. Our Early College Academy is a program that we developed to allow our junior and senior students access to college classes at the Mount Wachusett Community College campus during their junior and senior year as a replacement for their core classes here at Gardner High School. This allows them to build their college credits towards an associate's or a bachelor's degree while also staying involved in a high school, a traditional high school experience. They can still stay enrolled in all their sports, their extracurriculars, any specialty advisories they may have been a part of, walk with their normal graduating class as they would. However, they're earning a minimum of 18 college credits, up to 40 if not more if they want to challenge themselves to apply to an associate's or a bachelor's degree. Through the program, we're able to take care of at no cost the general requirements for all of the bachelor's or associate's degrees, including their English 101, their English 102, statistics, as well as some classes that might be of interest to them in order to help them decide what they would like to major in, such as some business classes like accounting or macroeconomics, or some healthcare classes such as biology, um, psychology, human growth and development. It's a really great opportunity for students to start their college career without having to take out student loans, and it also helps them build the skills they're going to need to be successful in college, like how to navigate a college campus, work with a professor, and access the different services that are available to them on a college setting. The pacing is different. Dual enrollment classes 
we keep on moving forward. There's not a lot of slowing down. Um, it's really in, on the students to come to office hours if they need you know, additional support. Another difference is that dual enrollment students really have a very specific goal of why they're sitting in those seats. They're looking for that transferable credit you know, or using that um, for, for their future in, in higher education. It's definitely more discussion based in a college course. They're doing all their independent reading, you know, on, on their own and then come in ready to discuss and really have those deep critical thinking discussions. A lot of these dual enrollment programs are grant funded, so um, there's an advantage to be able to get, you know, low cost college classes. I'm an English instructor, so I'm a, I'm a big word person. So even that oftentimes college terminology is a barrier. And so we're talking about admissions, transcript requests, add drop dates, withdrawal dates. Uh, this is just part of our regular conversation in a college course. So getting comfortable with that terminology might be a roadblock for a new college student, whereas our dual enrollment students are getting familiar with that. Learning those college skill sets that they wouldn't um, learn in high school. So rather than that freshman year of college seeing Blackboard for the first time, Blackboard is the college online platform. So they become familiar with using, um, using that platform. Another skill set is being able to use the college uh, library resources and the academic journals, which is a huge benefit. It can be a true confidence builder or a reality check. <laughs> um, I have some students who maybe weren't sure if college was for them, and then they're taking a college class. I treat them like college students, and oftentimes I have students who are really surprised how well they're able to keep up. And like, I've had students this year who came in maybe not so confident, and now they're going into English 102, college writing two, and we're like, hey, I got this, like, <laughs> I'm doing this. And, and I tell them all the time, hey, I'm teaching this class on Tuesday nights at the college. S same curriculum, same pacing, same everything. And so I think students are realizing like, hey, college, you know, it is for me. I wanted a classroom setting that was more self-paced and independent. And I personally saw it as a good opportunity to get some college classes out of the way by the time I graduate. I joined because I plan on going to college and then I plan on going to graduate school, which is expensive. And this is an easier way to get college credits and have it be more reliable than taking an AP test. I did take two AP tests and I got threes on both of them, so I figured that might not be the way to go. Really, it gave me an opportunity to see what college is going to be like and see what to expect from my professors in my classes and the professors and advisors have been a great help finding out what college is right for me and what major is right for me. I feel like the most beneficial part is um, the time management. I drive myself to and from school and so I have to be able to switch from the college to the high school um, which has given me a good sense of like okay this class is done I need to be here by this time. So I've gotten used to just having a weird schedule and making it better. It's really not a program where you can procrastinate. You have to take the time to schedule out your week. You have to take the time to get your work done. And it could be really hard at times, but I think it's very much worth it in the end. I would tell another student that you have to be able to communicate well. You have to be able to say, I need help. Because you see your teachers only once or twice a week. You see your advisors really only once a week. So you have to like be able to communicate when you're struggling because if you're not turning in assignments, teachers just don't know that. I know what to look for in my college classes, how they're genuinely set up, and um, really how to communicate with my professors and other students there.